Jordan Peele mentioned that the difference between horror and comedy is simply the music that's playing. And never before have I been as convinced as when I was re-watching Silence of the Lambs that this could be true. What, is there a scene or just the whole film? So without further ado, <laughs> please sit back and explore my thoughts on what if the Silence of the Lambs was an admittedly very dark comedy. Oh my goodness me. I like it, man. Let's go. I'm excited. <laughs> so, reasons why this could be a dark comedy. Bizarre characters. So, we've got Hannibal Lecter, we've got Buffalo Bu- <laughs> Buffalo Bill. They are already larger than life figures, um, but they've also got eccentricities that bordered on the caricature-ish, mm-hmm. I think could be very easy to is you know a flip of a coin there yeah. they're, they're close aren't they yeah. you were saying like they're pushing the boundaries of what's scary quite easily could be a bit funny here if we just positioned it a bit differently you ate Weetabix last week <laughs> I can smell it I on I you I can smell that <laughs> what do you fuck you <laughs> <laughs> so um, the chat GPT has tried to run with this a bit but imagine Hannibal's polite yet de- menacing demeanour turned into an over the top parody um, whatever bizarre characters check hammy performances we spoke about this earlier Anthony Hopkins portrayal of Hannibal Lecter both intense and theatrical very good for comedy. Um, it, here it gives an example of his famous line, which some people find scary. But really, when he says, I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you think that that could be a punchline? Yeah, 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 100%. So really, does it depend on the delivery or does it just depend on the setting? They've made it eerie when maybe it doesn't need to be. Ridiculous dialogue. The dialogue in the film, when taken out of context or delivered differently, could be absurdly funny. For instance, it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the holes again. <laughs> All that scene, <laughs> horrific. Yeah, it's pretty dark, that pretty. Yeah. That's not a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but is it a bit You're stupid? Twisted. <laughs> it's a dark, dark comedy. Emphasis no, I get, I get what you say. I get, I hear it. I hear it. Specific scenes. What we're all here for. Give me examples, Freddie. That's what you're screaming for. For anyone listening, the Buffalo Bill dance scene, obviously a go-to. The old yeah. flipping of the the penis into himself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you fuck me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd fuck me. Brilliant. Well, is it disturbing? We've all said that once or twice. <laughs> this is the very odd one. What do you fuck me? Um, which is disturbing in the original film for some, but it could easily be transformed into a darkly comedic moment with the absurd dance moves and quirky music. The scene where Hannibal taunts Senator Ruth Martin, the whole love your suit scene, yeah. where he just out of nowhere starts, just starts like, going, press me now. <laughs> do your titties hurt? <laughs> I found rewatching this so many times thinking like this is so close to this being could be a, a ridiculous okay. over the top comedy. You're ruining this film for me, man. This and so I think I thought of this idea from Peel quite early and it uh, affected oh, no. the more I watched it, the more I thought that could be so funny. It's just oh, not no. because so general ridiculousness. The, the very premise, <laughs> okay, of a cannibal who is called Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're not fucking dumb. <laughs> How are you trying to convince me? Cannibal, cannibal. <laughs> like, seriously, so obviously that's a coincidence. It's a bloody headline writer's dream that really did that have that much thought put into it? <laughs> This is a true. We're supposed to take this seriously. Why is we? it? Has anyone heard of the name Hannibal since the 12th century? <laughs> so. The, those are my thoughts. All right, let, let me hear. Now Now that I've I've given my outline, before we go into what I what I want to do to put this to the test, what do you think of that? I, I think uh, there were definitely, you, you're not wrong, there are some very ridiculous moments in it where, like, if it wasn't in the context of violent graphic murdering, then it genuinely could just be taken as hilarious. Do I think that maybe a slight change in the soundtrack would make it a comedy or anything? I think we've still got a little bit of distance to go before this thing becomes a comedy. Well, I'm glad you asked, Jumbo. 
Because <laughs> we're about to dive headfirst into copyright territory. All right, okay. So here's... I'm, <laughs> this is what my script says. I'm glad we agree, Jambo. <laughs> I'm glad we agree that it has the potential to fit Peel's hypothesis. Why don't we put it to the test? Jambo, I've got a series of scenes from the film that I'm going to attempt to recite that I think, under a different guise, might be a bit more humorous than it is scary, (laughs) horrific, psychologically disturbing. (laughs) Take your pick. Your job will be to choose a score from a random iconic film okay. and play it over the top quite loudly into your microphone. Hopefully, I think we'll do one and see if the audio works. I'll try and do an example. Okay. So you get an idea of what yeah, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then we'll see. We'll see what it sounds like. We'll see if it works. <laughs> Initially, <laughs> I did... Um, try and think of four things and I thought maybe maybe you think of some because it'll be funny for okay. me as well if, yeah yeah, now, yeah yeah now this is the I'm, I'm gonna do a surprise one but yeah. hopefully you get a sense of the sort of scope I'm thinking yeah 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 so yeah. I'm thinking scores that are dramatic and iconic don't need to be comedy scores they can just be you know mm. well I'll show you what I mean mm. okay it rubs lotion on its <laughs> skin it does it whatever it's told <laughs> My family will pay cash. Whatever ransom you're asking for, they'll pay it. It rubs the lotion <laughs> on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, it will, precious. It'll get the hose. Okay, okay, mister. If you let me go, I won't press charges. I promise. See, my mom is a real important woman. I guess you already know that. Now place the lotion in the basket. <laughs> please, please. I want to go home. Please. And place this lotion in the basket. I want to see my mommy put the fucking lotion in the basket. <laughs> If I put the lotion in the basket. God, you are you are a dark man, Freddy. You're a dark right. That was right of the row. Him in you are a dark, dark the man. Buffalo Bill. All right. I, I tell you what will help me is if you give me an idea of the scenes that we're working with. Okay, the next scene we're gonna look at is um between Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling. Mm-hmm. It's going to be well, might, might, I'll just picture one of those scenes. Let's try. I do have one, which I I which might be quite good. Yeah, go on. I'm I'm all ears. Pirates of the Caribbean. That is such a shout. I was thinking that might be a good one, and I forgot which one I was going to do first. But I reckon that one we could try. We should definitely be doing that. <laughs> we should give it a try. Uh, I was thinking, is there like a whimsical Wes Anderson sort of thing we can put on the oh, background? Yeah. There? What about the Pink Panther soundtrack? Yeah, yeah that's all like... Give that a try. See how that works. All right, you're not expecting me to do these uh, impressions, are you? <laughs> oh, I was going to do them and you... Yeah. I, what, I, what I think, though, on one of them, try and do a surprising one because I'll find it quite funny to see what, what, you, what you come up with. <laughs> all right. Should I, should I skip? Oh, yeah. After your father's murder, you were orphaned. You went to live with your cousins on a sheep and horse ranch in Montana. And, and, <laughs> and, and one morning I just ran away. Not just, Clarice. What set you off? You started at what time? Early, still dark. <laughs> and something woke you, didn't it? Was it a dream? What was it? I heard a strange noise. <laughs> what was it? It was sc- screaming, some kind of screaming, like a child's voice. <laughs> what did you do? I went downstairs, outside. I crept into the bar. I was so, I was so scared <laughs> to look inside. Oh, I had to. What did you see, Carries? What did you see? Lions. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs. So they were screaming, and you ran away. Oh, first I tried to free them. I opened the gate to their pen, but they wouldn't run. Up. They were just stood there confused. They wouldn't run, but you could, and you did, didn't you? <laughs> Yes, I took one lamb, I ran away as fast as I could. Where were you going, Clarice? Oh no, I didn't have any food, any water. It was very cold, so very cold. I thought, well, if I could just save one, but it's so heavy, it's so heavy. 
I didn't get more than a few miles on the sheriff's car premier. I was so angry. He sent me to live in the orphanage in Bozeman. I never saw the wretch again. I became of that lamb, Carries. He killed him. <laughs> you still wake up sometimes, don't you? <laughs> wake up in the dark and hear the screaming of the lambs. Yes. <laughs> and you think if you save poor Catherine, you could make them stop, don't you? You think if Catherine lives, you won't wake up in the dark ever again to that awful screaming of the lambs. You know what? That, that was a good, good ending. Uh, that, well, was that so was, you know what? That was too long. Maybe a little, yeah. <laughs> was like, there was a point where I was like... funny, and then I was like, there's too much of this. You'll have to cut this off now, won't you? <laughs> All right. Oh, he's still going. <laughs> All right. I reckon... That way, no. I, I thought that the... The the cadence of the song and the rhythm of the song with that conversation was really cool. I really liked it. Why don't we try Pirates of the Caribbean? Let's try Pirates of the Caribbean. Do you want, I'll get the music up. You so do you the can music. Focus on what you're doing. <laughs> I was already halfway through that video. Why don't we talk about Miss Moffat? You wanted me to find him. His real name was Benjamin Raspel. A former patient of mine, whose romantic attachments ran to, shall we say, the exotic. I did not kill him, merely tucked him away, very much as I found him, after he'd missed three appointments. If you didn't kill him, then who did, sir? Who can say? Best thing for him, really. His therapy was going nowhere. <laughs> His dress, makeup. Raspel was a transvestite? In life? Oh no. Garden variety, manic depressive. Tedious, very tedious. I now just think of him as a kind of experiment. A fledgling killer's first effort at transformation. <laughs> How did you feel when you saw him, Clarice? Scared at first, then exhilarated. Jack Crawford is helping your career. Apparently he likes you, and you like him. I never thought about it. Do you think Jack Crawford wants you sexually? <laughs> True, he is much older. But do you think he visualizes scenarios, exchanges, fucking you? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't interest me. And frankly, it's the sort of thing Matrix would say. Not anymore. Killer line at the end of that. Um, Pink Panther was slightly better than that, I thought, for the, for the match of the two. What do you reckon? Yeah, I did. I, I thought Pink Panther worked pretty well. What about? Do you have any more that lined up? I've well, got I was one thinking more. maybe a Harry Potter one could be fun to try, mm. but just because it's obviously it's so emotive, it's so it's so. But if you have an idea, mate, I'm I'm all ears. Well, let's just try this one and see if this works. I was gonna say Star Wars. Buffalo Bill's real name is Lewis Friend. I met him just once. He was referred to me in April or May 1980 by my, bench, by my patient Benjamin Raspel. <laughs> they were lovers, you see, but Raspel had become very frightened. Apparently, Lewis had murdered a transient and done things with his skin. <laughs> we need his address and physical description. Tell me, Senator, did you nurse Catherine yourself? <laughs> what? Did you breastfeed her? Now, wait a minute. Yes, I did. Toughened your nipples, didn't it? <laughs> you son of a bitch. Amputate a man's leg and he can still feel it tickling. Tell me, Mum, when your little girl is on the slab, where will it tickle you? <laughs> Take this thing back to Baltimore. Five for ten, strongly built, about 180 pounds. Hair blonde, eyes pale blue. He'd be about 35 now. He said he lived in Philadelphia, but he may have lied. That's all I can remember, Mum, but if I think of anything more, I'll let you know. <laughs> and Senator... Just one more thing. Love your suit. <laughs> <laughs> that was so long. <laughs> right, well, thanks so much for listening, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed that segment, we have other videos coming out on 500 Days of Summer, Life is Beautiful, and we have another video on The Silence of the Lambs. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please check them out there. Cheers, Dave. Thank you.